Welcome to the Hillsborough Libertarian Monthly Business Meeting for July 2018. Okay, this is actually kind of exciting for those of us who are seeing us running around here. Let's see, it's 7.09. Uh, we have Jason Stuber trying to check in. We have Laura trying to check in. And we have a brand new person, Divine. And she's possibly coming here to the location at LPHC headquarters. Or she might be calling in online. We haven't heard from her which way she wants to log in yet. That is something to pay attention. The LPHC headquarters and business office is not our current mailing address. That is something we are trying to rectify, which is why we need your $36 donation for 2018, because then we can rent out our office inside Cowork Tampa, which will give us access to the printing machine, the mailbox, the storage place, and all that. Right now, we have been relying on office space and storage space as total in-kind donations. Crazy looking forward to getting this all professional, and we are getting close, guys. If we can get some of you guys to donate your dollars, we are going to be right here kicking it. When you're checking in, what I'd really like for you to do is share not only your name, but what we'd really like you to share is which side of Hillsboro you on, and what are you most passionate about? So if you've been paying attention to our webpage, let me see if I can share screen here. I'll show you. Yeah. And I want to show you. Let's look at some of these exciting things. On our webpage right now, if you were to actually click on the donate tab right across the top right here, these are all the different things that matter to each one of us. So some of our people are very, very passionate about some things that other people really could care less about. So we're trying to find out from you, some of the 2,400 plus libertarians that reside right here in Hillsborough County, what is most important to you? And how are we getting those answers? With your dollars, because every dollar equals a vote. So I want you to pay attention to this. Go to hillsboroughlibertarians.org slash donate and put your $36. You can break it up into different pieces if you want to. And let us know what's most important to you. Why are we telling you to do this right now? Because soon we're going to have reached out to every Hillsboro Libertarian, all 2,400 of you, and we are going to be starting to reach out to non-duopoly voters. Do you want them telling you where we want our focus on? I don't think so. You guys want to tell me what you want that's important. So this is how we can hear from you. Where's your voice? So if it's about health care, click here. If it's about legalizing marijuana beyond the medicinal, just deregulating it altogether. If you're someone who's looking for homeschooling options and school choice and that's what's important to you, then put your dollars here under school choice. If you understand that we work so hard and we created such a great win, we, we won so many battles in the last couple of years, guys, and getting all these solar things passed that we did were great. But you know, when we had a hurricane hit, we still couldn't turn on our solar power from our roots. Why? Because we haven't got it authorized for those little switches to protect the little guys that are working out on the line. And we don't want to blow up our linemen with the power going back. We know how to turn that off. So we have a little bit more work to do on that. So you're allowed to use your solar power in the event of a hurricane and no power. Are you interested in getting our activists trained more and you want to donate towards that? Here, let us know. If you're looking for candidates more, we're working for 2020 candidates, 2024 candidates, and getting their support team. Let us know here. Are you upset about the Second Amendment rights? We've had some major things happening in Florida where people are looking to grab your guns and to grab your right to defend yourself. So if that's what's important to you, click here. Property rights, click here. If you are as upset as I am about the fact that they want to toll your Howard Franklin Bridge, oh, heck no. We got them stopped on that one. Oh, they want to toll our I-275 and do a TBX. Oh, no, we stopped them. TB next. Oh, no, we stopped them. And now they're heading for I-75 down in Apollo Beach. If it's not a private road, if it's not something specifically designed as a toll road, if they want to take our roads and they want to charge us a toll to drive on our own roads that we maintain, that's not okay with us. 
If you're someone who's upset about the Rays Stadium coming to Tampa and don't want your tax dollars being spent on that, then let us know by clicking here. If you're someone who wants to stop the red light cameras, we're collecting petition signatures, click here. Put your donation on whichever category is most important to you. If you're someone who just wants to keep up with the general administration of our cost, which includes office, storage, mailboxes, photocopying, web pages, emails, all those type of things, just let us know that you want the administrative stuff right here. So jump on in, go to hillsboroughlibertarians.org slash donate, and you vote with your dollars. You tell us what's most important to you. We're not guaranteeing we're going to spend your particular dollars on that particular topic, but we are saying we want to hear what's important to you. So tell us what's important to you as a Hillsborough Libertarian before we start reaching out to the non-party duopoly voters to find out what's important to them. Let's get back to the Zoom room and see what's going on. We lost Kevin. He just walked out the room on me. So, Jason, are you in the room? Jason, I can see your name. Are you here? I am here. Yay! Hey, Jason. So, you're on hey. audio but no video. Is that correct? Yep. Perfect. Gotcha. So, I have Kevin here. I do know that I sent the link to Laura. She was trying to get in, and we have a new girl named Naveen, which was trying to get in. From 7 to 7.30 in the Zoom room, I'm really just looking for people to say hello, introduce themselves, what side of Hillsborough County they're on, and what are they most passionate about. So, Kevin, you want to share with us what part of town you're in and what you're most passionate about about the Libertarian Party? Hey everybody, hey Jason, it's Kevin here. Uh, I live in Old Seminole Heights, Tampa, which so pretty much the middle of Tampa, where the neighborhoods are, north side of town. <clears throat> um, most passionate, so probably, you know, government fraud is probably what I'm most passionate about. Uh, that would be, you know, rooting it out or preventing it or calling out, you know, participants in the government who are, in my mind, uh, committing some kind of fraud, whether it's a democratic procedural fraud or, or just straight up lying. And of course, you know, in most cases, uh, theft is involved with the government. So that's pretty much, uh, those are pretty much my main drivers, I would guess. That's what I'm saying now anyways. Um, and in general, I'm just trying to, uh, you know, be part of the team here keep a uh, affiliates affiliate growing and um you know it, it, I, you know we have a couple new people who just contacted us today so i guess some of the social media is working and they're they're reaching back and trying to engage with us jason you want to give us your lowdown sure uh i am over on the west side of tampa um and i would be most passionate currently subject to change uh the waste Generally, uh, monetary waste, but also just, uh, I mean, you know, the bloated government that, uh, that is currently there. And so I am behind any effort to make it smaller. Ooh, there's a lot of room for that. Yeah, <laughs> we need that. I'm going to check the front door. Okay. Um, I'm Susan. I'm your current chairperson, and I am most passionate about the boring stuff. I am passionate about the strategic, the planning, the um, getting our volunteers active and trained and finding where the glove meets the hand. Where, where do people who share what they share about, care what they care about, their actions. Oh my gosh, we got people coming in left and right. Okay, people, where people can be active and make a difference and celebrate and feel that win. Because that's important. If you don't feel the win, then you're not going to be able to be sustained. And we're not looking for people to come in be a fire shot and then blow out in six months. We want people who can just have a reasonable expectation of a, how can I participate? Even if all it is is sign a petition two or three times a year, that that's fine. If it's, I can cut a check for $120 once a year, that's fine. How can we count on you? And so a lot of my passion is connecting with people. Okay. I have to put on my glasses guys, cause I'm old and blind and I can't even see my, <laughs> Okay, so what I want to show you for the meeting, for the recording, 
It is almost 7.30, and I'm going to call the meeting to order here in about three and a half minutes. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you on my screen some pieces of information. So you're going to not always see my face. You'll hear my voice. Um, for roll call purposes right now, I see Susan Stanley, Chair, Kevin O'Neill, Treasurer, I had to think what position you You've been here for so many years, I can't remember what position you're at at which time. And Jason Stuber, secretary. Excused absence is Chris Kuat, which is our vice chair. He's actually working on Sunday nights, so it's difficult for him to make these meetings on a regular basis. But um, we're working around that. So he's turning stuff in ahead of time, catching stuff afterwards. So we have three people here, which means for legal purposes, we can't really make a vote and vote on anything because we do need four voting members to be a quorum. However, currently we have zero motions on the table for voting, which is probably why we have nobody here to vote. Um, so with that, we have a lot of reports and just updating exciting information. So I'll kind of go through some of that while we go through real fast and we'll turn the floor over to um, Kevin where he's going to give our updates for the LNC convention. On Facebook, I'll show you some fun stuff before we call the meeting to order in the last minute and a half. Okay, so on our page right now, I posted recently this meeting. Um, I would like to encourage everybody to share and to tag people's names in the post. So let's see if it brings it up here pretty quick. You'll be able to see like it says Sunday at 7 p.m. the Hillsboro Business Meeting held online. Okay, so Sunday at 7 p.m. is our business meeting held online. Introduce yourself, where in Hillsboro you live or work, and what's of most interest to you with respect to the Libertarian Party of Hillsboro County. So these types of things, they also show on here when you click see more, we, you can see the link to register for the meeting. So if you are somebody who's working with volunteers, whether it's in your team, whether it's on a particular project or whatever you're doing, just feel free to share this, tag people, let us know. This is really just a screen grab of the front page of our website, which is updated on a regular basis. So if you were on the homepage of our Hillsboro Libertarians, you can see the exact same thing. It's showing you on the homepage how to sign up. If you click the registration, it's gonna give you the link to the meeting. If you go inside the meetings, it's gonna give you the meetings. If you actually check on the calendar, which will populate here shortly, um, the links are on the <coughs> calendar date. So you can always go into any calendar issue and it's going to show you. You can open it up, all the links of how to get here. So encourage and invite all of your friends to participate and to get connected, to have a say. They are always welcome to submit um, motions to be discussed at the business meeting as well. And all of those things we keep on our Google Drive inside a public file. We also try and keep in here some basic things like here's our districts, here's our precincts. Um, I try and keep, um, if it's something like this is our 2020 vision, any current pictures that we're trying to post in case you wanted to share it forward. And then this is our agenda for tonight's meeting and this is the LNC convention report. So I am going to open up agenda meeting for tonight and call our meeting to order. This call is recorded. Um, we do record all of our stuff, and we do not post everything on YouTube, but we use it to help our secretary and people find information. Frequently, we share it on YouTube. Oh, Brett Ramori is not here tonight. Jason, you will actually have ability to do all this. You have access to this. You just don't really know about it right now. Um, so as we're learning and growing, you'll be able to do this as we go. I actually anticipate us growing and being online a whole lot and being able to incorporate more people when we have large votes. So it may be something that we actually want someone to help you personally with taking notes or something. We'll find out how much volunteer time we need. Okay, so determination of a quorum. Normally, Jason, we would go to you and you would say as a secretary, yes or no. For a quorum, what we need is four LPHC voting members present. Then um, we approve the agenda. 
all of this stuff is available in advance on the Google Drive. So usually this part goes fast because if anybody has an objection or tells me anything, I'm usually updating it through the week. So I don't usually have any objections going through. But um, every once in a while, someone may want us to edit it on the fly. They can see this link from where they're at. So as we are editing it, they're seeing the edits. And then we walk straight into the reports. So right now I still have Chris is here. We need to write Jason Stuber as our new secretary. So I'm assuming you don't have any reports, but the floor is yours, Jason. Would you like to, anything to share? I have no reports. I feel like I should give you the floor anyway, just in case. So, Mr. Treasurer, Kevin O'Neill, do you have anything to say besides give me money? <clears throat> you can still say give me money. No, I don't. I, I could say, uh, you know, we have, we have a bank account. I have access to it. I haven't looked at it in, in a couple weeks. I think last I did look, it had like $180 or something like that. But I know uh, Susie had, had uh, released this uh, request for donations. So, um she and I need to sit and go through where those donations land. I can explain that. Um, when it comes to our donation sites, these are our donation sites. So on our webpage, if you go, this is fairly new. We have just done this in the last week. So we are looking for people to speak their mind. Right now, we're reaching out to Hillsborough Libertarians to speak their mind and to tell us what is most important to them? So one of the ways we can track what is most important to them is every dollar counts as a vote. So if you are very, very passionate about solar power or legalizing marijuana, deregulating marijuana or homeschooling or no tolls, you can place your donation on any of these things, whether it's a candidate, whether it's don't use my tax dollars to fund the Ray Stadium, or if you just want to post towards our costs. operating costs, cover our email, cover our website, cover our PO box, cover our storage, cover our office, cover our copying and printing and mailing, all that stuff just goes into this one. Otherwise, if you have a topic and you want to support something in particular from training our activists or anything, putting it in a category and where those categories are, are right here so we can see who's passionate about second amendment open carry who's passionate about candidates for 2020 who's passionate for free market solar power and this is something brand new but it'll give us an opportunity to see where people are spending their dollars this is our goal 4605 this is how much we raised during the second quarter was 180 so we're trying something different this time to get people's votes. So right now there's no dollars there, but they will all go to the same bank account. It's just going into right a different here. tracking. Transfer It'll transfer. automatically transfer into your PHC checking account. But you have a report that tells us, for example, if we were to look at this one here and we say, okay, so second quarter of this year, that $180 came from we can actually click in here and say, see view reports. And we can see Chris, Chris Hupp and Brian Zemina's two different donations. And so you can see like, it'll tell you Brian Zemina and what he donated, how his contact information is. And then these are the questions that we have to answer for our FEC regulations. So what are your occupations and what are their employer? They fill it out so that our LPHC treasurer can report that on the supervisor of elections. So, so I appreciate you explaining that part. So that was one detail I don't, I don't personally have control over yet, but nonetheless, thanks for giving us the review. That concludes my treasurer's report. Thank you. Sorry, I kind of gave you a treasurer's report. No problem. <laughs> well, I tried to answer your question. Okay, Vice Chair Chris Kuat. Um, Chris actually, asked me to share, I met with a college student who's working on her master's, who's interested in doing something at USF and starting a college educational outreach series on campus. So he's gonna be working with her. Um, he's also looking at doing a philosophical 
outreach where the words that he used, why is libertarianism good for me? And from that is the outreach of the homeschool project that they're hoping to do in October. We've reached out to a couple of people. We haven't got the committee completely formalized, so I don't want to put anybody's name on record yet. His whole thing is basically thinking about it like a salesman with why is libertarianism good for me and what am I getting out of it? And so that would be important. Chair report. Chair report is me. Um, I'm very focused on strategy, so I'm very focused on 2020 and visions and plans and I'm a geek about all that stuff and people are just like probably nerded out from Susie but I want to remind everybody that we do have a so 2020 Hillsborough Libertarians our strategic vision um, this is on our web page it is linked on our Facebook it is all over the place I am excited to keep people in mind and sharing what we're doing so who are we connecting with how much money are we trying to raise? How are we equipping our activists to get stuff done? How are we building community so there's personal relationships, eyeball to eyeball, having fun so people are accountable and they're not just blowing in and blowing out? And then how are we holding our elected officials accountable? Of course, we can't do any of all this good stuff without raising the money. So what we need to do is to raise what we are hoping to get as a quarterly goal once during 2018, because it's our first time of raising money in probably eight years now, guys. So we need to get on track and pay attention. So we're trying to raise one quarter's worth of income during one year. That seems very doable to me, guys. I'm asking you to donate $3 a month. That's less than your Starbucks coffee. Give me a break. To protect liberty right here at home and to fund your activists and to get petition signatures, we need that. This is like, if, if you really mean it and you're really a libertarian voter, we need your $36. We're willing to say thank you. We're going to give you a bumper sticker with the torch on it that says HillsboroughLibertarians.org and everything. 2019 is the next year, and look, it's a lot of it's the same thing, except for instead of reaching out to our only our Libertarian voters, we're going to start reaching out to Libertarian voters and start reaching out to the MPA voters. We are trying to hold elected officials accountable, and we are looking for candidates for 2020 and 2024, because we've got some big election years coming up, and we need our activists trained and our candidates prepped. So now in 2019, we're raising two quarters worth of income during that year. That's doable. Next year, the 2020 vision, we're at three quarters and we will be earning that same money. We are going to be running candidates. The whole goal here and why we're politically active is because we want when we go and Kevin, who's our political activist chair, is sitting in front of an MPO meeting or a Board of County Commissioners meeting, or a Temple Terrace City meeting, or a Tampa or a Plant City City meeting, or an MPO planning meeting. When we're facing those people on the other side of that bench, we want our libertarian, libertarian-friendly bases on the other side of that. So how do we accomplish that? We need to get these people elected and hold them accountable. So for that, we need your dollars. So we are reaching out, trying to get everybody to give us $36 a year, guys. $36 a year. And I'm going to show you something super exciting because I'm a strategy kind of gal. Check this out. Have you seen this? Look at this. $36. Oops, somebody's at the front door. Yay. Um, $36 from each of our libertarians covers our mailbox, it covers our office, it covers our storage, it covers our phone, it covers our voicemail, it covers our website, it covers our office supplies, printing supplies, reaching out to every libertarian, telling them what's up, candidate recruiting, volunteer appreciation, activist training. You guys, this is doable. Could you imagine? Just think about this. If only the people who said no to the duopoly, if only the people who said yes to the Libertarian Party, if only the people who said that that lived in Hillsborough County alone gave only $3 a month a cup of coffee, look at this. We are talking about $7,200,000 a year. Are you kidding me? This is a kick butt 
local party and we are getting stuff done right here in hillsborough county if you just get this let me zip over to the camera so you guys can Ta -da! we got new faces in the room we are recording we are live i want to make sure you guys know that straight up one of the first things we do do is ask you to share your name if you're in Hillsborough County, where you live, and why you're most excited about Hillsborough Libertarians. There are other people online, so there's oh, cool. you. So, Naveen joined us. Awesome. Hi, Naveen. So, go ahead and share us. Hey, come hey, on in. Hey guys, so, um, awesome. Awesome. share your Jeremy. name, Rachel. what side of town you're on, and Jeremy. what are you most passionate about with the Hillsborough Libertarians? Okay, um, so I'm Sid, I'm from East Tampa in Hillsborough, and I'm excited about the um, Libertarian Party of Hillsborough because I want to see um, drugs to be left. Oh, awesome. That's definitely one of our hot thoughts. Um, I live with her, and uh, or I'm staying with her, and my name is Logan. Logan Hi, Logan. Logan. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, I'm an anarchist. I'm most excited just because I'm an anarchist. So. <laughs> no government. That's yeah, possible. yeah, exactly. Okay, let me twist this a little bit. So go ahead, cheers. Right. My name is Austin. Um, and yeah, I want to smash the state. It stop like state police repression against people. It's no good. Government's no good. So, and which side of Hillsborough are you on? I'm actually from St. Petersburg. Oh, cool. But, okay. You know. We have a really good group over in St. Petersburg too. So and we work back and forth with both of them. Yeah. I'm Rachel. I'm from Pasco County. Oh hi Rachel. And Pasco County actually is unaffiliated right now. So you guys are floating around with us right now and we're trying to get Pasco affiliates. You guys will have your own group there too. You um Naveen, are you online? I can hear you. How are you? Yay. So why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself, what side of county you're on? Yeah, I actually, I split my time between Hillsborough and Pinellas. I grew up on the St. Pete side, and then I went to Texas for a while, and then I came back, and I, uh, I'm registered in Tampa. So I, uh, I have a corporate apartment over by Rocky Point, so it's near the airport, and I, oh, wow. I spent some time there, and then I spent some time on the Pinellas side, too. Awesome. So do you have a passion, Naveen, over what's most important to you as far as Hillsborough Libertarians and politics goes? Uh, I just really want to stop the duopoly. I just think we need more options. Um, you know, that's, that's my main motivation right now is to just ensure that we have more candidates uh, that are out there. Awesome. So Jason, for our secretary records, I do know that Naveen is approved. Kevin, Susan, Jason, and Sid. So you do have enough voters and then we have guests. So what happens if you float between two counties? You're still registered to vote in only one county. You can actually be a member, you can be a voting member. Yes. So we, right. So we have a lot of things that we call supporters and our supporters help us get stuff done, which is super, super critical. They just really don't get to have the final say so when it comes to where we're going to go. So if we're planning strategic plans or something like that, then we only want our Hillsborough Libertarians actually having the vote. Jason, just for your FYI, when we're tracking the minutes, because we do this as we go, really the minutes is just saving this document. And what we do is we submit it, we send it out to all the people who are voting members who attended and said, is this what you think happened? And as soon as they say approval of the minutes, then it moves forward and it's all fine. So the determination of a quorum is yes, which normally Jason would be doing this, but Jason's brand new, so we're helping him. So um, approval of the agenda we've already done. And so we're kind of talking right about this when you guys walked in. So ta-da! Okay, so we are at fundraising, which is what we're talking about. We're currently reaching out to all of our Hillsborough Libertarian voters. We're asking for $36 a year. So we're giving people a um, dollar equals a vote. So tell us when you donate your $36 to the Hillsborough Libertarian, what's important to you? So they can split it, they can divide it, but if you're all about legalizing marijuana, deregulating it, if you're all about deregulating prostitution, if, if you're all about homeschool, if you're all about stopping tolls, whatever it is, tell us. And what we created, which is brand new for us, is um, these donation tracking reports for our treasurer, 
so he can tell and report to us what's important to our people. So we know, because we have limited resources, we have limited volunteer efforts, we have limited dollars, we have limited things we can work with. So when we're working and we're fighting, that's why we ask you what's important to you, what's passionate to you all the time. is because that's where we want to spend our efforts is with what's important to our people. What if we had a budget that looks something like this and we were showing people, you know, what is the annual expense of different things from our office, from our storage, from our mailbox, for our voicemail, office supplies, you know, finding candidates, supporting candidates, training our volunteers and all that stuff. Our current goal is 4,604.50 per quarter, which not only meets our current needs, you can give $5 a year. We would still love you. It doesn't really matter. We'll take any money. But we were just trying to get a visual of, could you imagine if each one of us just gave a little bit to what we really believe in? This is a dreaming budget. This is not something that it says right up. Can you imagine? This is not something that we expect right now. So keeping that in mind, what do we expect? So our 2020 vision, we're actually looking to raise $4,650 this year. We recognize that we're really trying to raise this kind of money each quarter in the long run. So if we're trying to raise that kind of money in a quarter, this year we're trying to raise it in a year. Because Hillsborough Libertarians have really never really worked at raising money. So for this year, we're going to try and raise one quarter's worth of income this year. Next year, we're going to try and raise two quarters worth of income in one year. The next year, we're going to try and raise three quarters worth of income in one year. And hopefully, we're reaching out and growing databases and growing each time. So by four years out from now, we will be getting our quarterly goals, which are still under $5,000 a quarter. Our county, a third of the people are... Republican, a third a Democrat, and a third are none of the duopoly. So who are our libertarian voters? They're the none of the duopoly voters. So even if they don't know they're libertarian, even if they don't align with the libertarian, if we can convince one third of the voters that it's worth getting off the couch and voting for whoever our great candidate is, we can put those people on the board of county commissioners. We can put them on city council. We can, like you said, crushing the dollars. So our goals are to reach out to those people, raise the money, equipping our activists. We want to train and get our people activated. We want to build community. We want to build friendships. So we've got socials built throughout the entire county. We need to be able to build communities. So whether you're meeting with um, different socials in different areas, whether you're active showing up at different events, all those things build community. And then the last part right now is holding elected account officials accountable. We have some people that we've helped get into office and we're holding them accountable. And then in the future, step six is running our own candidates in there for 2020 and 2024, 2022 in the middle, you know, getting our people on the other side of that bench because um, that's where we win. That's when, when we stand there at MPO meetings, when we stand there at county and city meetings and we're yelling, no, 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 yes, 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 whatever it is we're fighting for. Um, when our face is looking back at us or our people, that helps so much to promote our stuff. So, um, that's the big strategic plan and what we're looking at. And these are just our bylaws that support this information. Membership. So right now, I really do not know the um, end of June numbers. They are not up online um, because of the 4th of July. So we're still looking at the numbers that are the end of June numbers. So we were at 2353. Um, these are people who are willing to tell us their information. Libertarians are kind of a private sort of people, so they often don't want to disclose their information. So our number is almost 2,500 if you look at the voter numbers up at the state, but a lot of them say, I won't disclose my information, which I always find ironic, because if you're libertarian and you're trying to fight against stuff, then the libertarians who are hiding means the libertarians who are trying to fight with you can't connect with you. So we have about 150 people who won't share their information with us, but we know they're there somewhere. <laughs> so these are the people that are willing to share their information with us, and that's 2353 right now, which for those who are new to Hillsborough Libertarian Active Moments, um, the state of Florida is currently third in the nation with the most registered numbers of libertarians. Hillsborough County, Pinellas County, 
battle back and forth over the last couple of years of who has the most libertarians in their county. Um, so most of the time we've been on top, but every once in a while they beat us because they do a push and then we go back on top and then they beat us for a push. And then um, right now, as far as the state as elected officials serving in office, Georgia has the number one spot till November. And then when our people who are, are running right now in the state of Florida who are uncontested, who we know we're going to win, we will have the most, the state of Florida will have the most number of libertarians serving in office of every state in the United States. So you're actually in a great county to be excited. Communications, we're doing stuff with our website, our social media, our MailChimp. If, if you're not on our MailChimp yet, jump on our MailChimp so you get information. Postcards are like what's behind you. We send out postcards to every new libertarian as they join up. Um, we're also trying to raise the money enough to actually reach out to every Hillsborough libertarian, either by phone, by postcard, or knocking on their door. Petition signatures. We're currently collecting petition signatures on two different. So one of them is red light cameras. They're trying to stop the red light cameras. So there's a whole bunch of petition signatures collecting for that. Um, we're trying to put it on a constitutional revision, but we didn't want it to go in this time in 2018 because we believe there's a thing called ballot fatigue and people are going to be seeing all the constitutional revisions and they're not going to approve ours because they're just going to go no across the board because they're exhausted. So all of ours are going currently for the 2020 campaign and we have to raise 250,000 across all of Tampa Bay. So Orlando has to get over 250,000. Miami has to get over 250,000. Um, the total number is 850,000. So we're trying to collect 250,000 petition signatures. Um, one of them is red light cameras. One of them is toll roads. So if you haven't been active with the Hillsborough Libertarians, we have had some major wins with tolls, unlike Orlando and Miami, which is super, super exciting. And so this is a really big passionate area for our Hillsborough County. So if you've driven in Orlando or you've driven in Miami or you've driven down Toll Pike, you know you're hitting toll, 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 toll. So they came in and they wanted to toll the Howard Franklin Bridge and Pinellas Libertarians, Hillsborough Libertarians and Sunshine Citizens all got together, put on yellow shirts and they had a meeting on the Pinellas side of the bridge and they had a meeting on the Hillsborough side of the bridge and they gave up and they said there's too much opposition to toll Howard Franklin Bridge and we said, oh, we'll take that as a win. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. So then they said they were going to um, create TVX, which is what all those stop TVX and we want transit and all that stuff that's floating around. So they came in and what they wanted to do is they wanted to take one lane of I-275 going into Tampa and make it a high variable toll lane so they could get Wesley Chapel zooming in. If you think the crosstown coming in from Brandon into Tampa, they wanted to do that from Wesley Chapel because they were going to take up an entire lane of I-275. They were going to charge you a toll based on how much it how many people were driving at the time, it was going to cost more, cost less. So it could theoretically cost you $36 to get from Wesley Chapel to downtown Tampa. In the meantime, they took the eight current exits going into Tampa down to two. So they're going to take two exits out of going into downtown Tampa. So um, a, the same group of people all got together and said, nah, -uh, not in Hillsborough County, not in our hometown. So we fought them for three years. We um, got them stalemated, and they sent our volunteers with Sporta County Commissioner and Transportation Representative to St. Louis, which is evidently the most recent other town that's had the same battle when the voters object to the State Department of Transportation. And they came back, and they created a new program, and they called it TV Next. So we fought that battle pretty hard. And just over a month ago, Department of Florida Department of Transportation said, we give up, we cry, uncle, we're not tolling I-275 for now, close the deal. The very next day, they showed up and they said, we're going to go to I-75, we're going to toll I-75 down by Apollo Beach. So our activists are reforming and they're saying, you're still in Hillsborough County and we're not turning this into Orlando and Miami and it ain't happening in our hometown. So that's the transportation and the petition signatures are requiring as a constitutional revision, they would have to seek 60% voter approval before the, any taxing authority in the state of Florida can toll a road that currently exists. If they want to build a brand new road, if they want to pay for it with tolls, that's on them. But if you want to tax us, our current taxpayers, on a road that we already have and own, nah, -uh, you need our approval first. So that's the second petition signature. 
And our coordinator is our political action committee chairperson, which is Kevin O'Neill right behind you. And um, he's working with a volunteer group that's here running through the whole state of Florida. And they are trying to collect 800 or 850,000 petition signatures, which is how we got in our area. So they will be doing a process called Occupy the primaries, occupy the early voting, and occupy the polls. So those people who are showing up and voting at the primary are voters. We know they're voters because they just voted. So we're looking for their signatures. So rather than standing like you see people in front of Walmart or Publix, we're not going to stand there for forever and then try and verify your vote forever. You just walked out of the voting booth. We know you're eligible to vote. Do you care about this sign here? So he's going to be looking for people volunteers to help at Occupy the Poll. Drop you at the busiest polling places so right. you can make the most of your time. He does really good. He's got some great training. He shows you how to do it. He shows you how to fight the wind, fight the rain, fight the everything. This is crazy. This is easy. Get the most signatures. Least amount of work, least amount of time, biggest amount of impact. So it's, I have million signatures. It's a huge endeavor. It is a huge endeavor. Chris Willis is our state chair rep, and he's working with Kevin, and he's awesome. And I don't want to feel like we need to feel competition and pressure, but Miami's already got over 125,000 awesome. signatures, and I think we've got six. So not that there's a whole lot of pressure, but um, we just started and they started almost a year ago. So in all fairness, we have some catching up to do. Um, transportation, those people are starting to show up at the transportation meetings and stuff down in Apollo Beach. We have some people down there. We have two girls who are working really hard down there. Um, we need to get more support from people in Apollo Beach area for them. Homeschool outreach is we've got three girls who are working with our vice chair. They're looking at maybe the second Saturday in October, maybe at a public library. They want it to be outreach. That's all about the school stuff. Hemp Fest is actually in Lakeland, and that'll be October 13th and 14th. We're looking at passing out information and stuff there. Um, Occupy the Polls is what we just talked about. Libertarian birthday party is actually over in Pinellas on December 11th. Um, LPHC convention is when we say thank you to all of our volunteers. It's when we elect our next officers. If we have any petitions to change our bylaws or anything like that, that's when we would do that. Um, what does HC stand for? LPHC is Libertarian Party of Hillsborough County. Oh. Us. Um, so our elections are all in February. It's the second Saturday in February. Our meetings are usually on Sundays, so we'll probably do it on a Saturday so that it makes sense. Um, the first business meeting of the next officers would be that following Sunday. Um, LP Florida convention, we haven't heard the date. Freedom Festival, this is, Brett is not here right now, but he's really interested in doing a Freedom Festival with music and speakers and exciting things. So um, we're looking at doing that. It's going to be a big project. Yeah, that's <laughs> going to be a huge project. We're currently looking at the third Saturday in March, reaching out to different musicians. I'm a You're a musician? I'll do it for free. Rock on. That's what we're looking for. It's cool. So we'll connect you with Brett. So he's awesome. And then um, these are just our socials. We have monthly socials. Right now we have one in Temple Terrace, one in South Tampa. Um, our girl who used to do it over in Riverview is currently moved. So um, anybody who wants to take over Riverview, she used to do craftology. Have you ever heard of craftology out there? Mm -hmm. It's got, she was so cute. She found it and she called me. She's like, oh my God, I found it, I found it, I found it. And you have people who say, I won't go unless there's coffee and dessert. I won't go unless there's beer and wine. I won't go unless there's a place for my kids. <laughs> and craftology has all of the above. Oh, and she nice. was so excited. So if anybody wants to do one there, and then um, we're still looking to put a social down in Plant City. It's other reports, Region 8 is... We are Pasco, Pinellas, Holt, Hillsboro, and Hernando is our region within the state. So we do do some Region 8 events periodically. As a, as a state guy, he's supposed to help organize affiliates in the county. So he, right, he's our coordinator to the state. So if you went from the big nation at the National LP, which is the convention that just ended, our Region 2 rep, which is Georgia, Florida Tennessee. and Tennessee. Steve Nicola is yeah. our first one, and Victoria is her is his assistant or alternate. And then inside that is the state of Florida, and inside the state is Region Eight, and then inside Region Eight is our county. 
So we have a brand new Region 8 rep trying to learn everything and he'll probably have a report at some time to tell us. Right now he was just collecting with what do all the counties want and he'll come back to us. You know, like, if you needed to have a state person get engaged with you to, to meet up and start organizing the affiliate again in um, Pasco, then they, they would be available to do that. He's the rep who would be the one who is helping you do that. I know that we've had a couple of socials in the past trying to get people to be legit at the state level, you have to have at least three, they recommend four volunteers. So one person has to sign up as chair, vice chair. They will let you have a treasury, which is your treasurer and secretary combined, <laughs> but they recommend you split those. You need at least three people willing to sign the state paperwork, put your names on the bank account and be legit and get trained with the state. So I know they're reaching out and doing socials in both counties, trying to get both counties to be affiliated. There are a handful of activists up there, so mm -hmm. just kind of around them. It's getting them back together. So then the next one will be just LP Florida in general. And right now, everybody just went to um, the state, the national convention. So everybody's information is still flying in from convention. So once we hear it all, learn it all, there'll probably be a summary report. So Kevin, you're up with the LNC convention report. <clears throat> So this is Kevin, the guy's treasurer for the county here. Um, so, so Susie and I, and, um, so pretty much the whole room except for one person was up there at the uh, National <laughs> Convention, which is just amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have it up there. Okay, cool. So, so I guess I'll just try to work, kind of go along in this. So I'll just blast through this quickly. So um, this is Kevin O'Neill telling you about the National Convention that just wrapped up. It took place <laughs> like, for the um, what is it? It's like some Sunday, right? So I think it went from like Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. I think last week were the days. Um, so it, it, it worked out. Um, the same chairman is the same chairman. Nick Nick uh, Sarwalk, uh, obviously a very competent guy, and I think he had like eighty percent of the vote, so that was good. A um, lot of lot of votes took place. I think what I want to point out is some of the platform. Um, the platform for the party, there was a couple, a couple notable changes of flag. It was a total of like a dozen changes to the platform, I believe. Um, but the, the one that came to mind was we do have a, a comment about free trade and, migra and, and migration. So we used to have um, this, you know, this paragraph used to have this sentence that says, however, we support control over the entry into our country of foreign nationals who pose a credible threat to security, health, or property. Mm -hmm. so, so that got deleted. Part of the rationale for deleting it is that it's basically redundant, <laughs> but I think there was emotionally in the room, or at least a lot of the votes in the room were kind of doing this, this you know, Trump, Trump and his wall thing. So they're kind of doing this anti-Trump and anti-wall thing i think is my interpretation of how i felt the room read this but the um the but the paragraph uh still remains minus that one sentence i'll just read it real quick it says we support the removal of governmental uh, impediments to free trade political freedom and escape from tyranny demands that individuals not be unreasonably constrained by government and the crossing of political boundaries Economic freedom demands the unrestricted movement of human as well as fiscal, uh, financial capital across national borders. So, so we basically dumped that last sentence. Um, another notable one, which um, I'm getting this secondhand, I, the actual language was created on the fly, but this, co this category, this, this, this topic was part of the uh, printed um, platform proposal for changes. And I'll just read to you. It says, we assert the right of consenting adults to provide sexual services to clients for compensation and the right of clients to purchase sexual services from consenting sex workers. So, so I think this is basically, you know, in, in general, we're trying to decriminalize our society. And this is one of those areas that is obviously between adults and um, I don't know. That's, that's a big one because I think we do have to deal with that in the public if we're trying to convince, you know, uh, convert hearts and minds to, to our way of thinking. Somehow we're going to have to somehow stand and deliver what were we thinking when we voted this. So um, I think what we're thinking about is not putting people in cages and minding our own business is sort of my, you know, Main Street USA version of, of, of that. Does anybody guys want to jump in on that one, anybody? 
No, I agree. With you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's we're, wow. Yeah, I agree. With you. Also, wholeheartedly support sex workers. Yeah. So we, um, our little affiliate was in Ebor on Sex Workers Day, like six weeks ago or something like that. I don't even know if this does even exist, but there's a, apparently a Sex Workers Day. Oh yeah. You went out to Ebor. Yeah, so the socialists were showing up, and I was like, socialists can't steal sex workers' That's day. That's where I know you <laughs> <laughs> So I showed up representing libertarians and free markets and capitalism, and, and uh, so I was kind of a counter-protest, although I was basically free. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I was just like stirring it up, so yeah, like, yeah. Do it, the old guy stirring it up with the Nibor. <laughs> that was fun that day. <laughs> it was a good time. So we already got some credibility here with this category. Um, the rest of it is, is listed on this um, report, which is that public folder. If you've got, if you get that uh, Mailchimp um, newsletter that Susie sent out, I think I think it goes out to just about everybody. The link is in there. This, this link at the top of the screen is in that newsletter. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, there was a, a controversial vice chairman named Arvin Vorha. I think it's pronounced. Um, Vora, right? yeah, super smart guy, probably like a 190 IQ. Um, uh, beyond, I mean, it's, it's, I don't even know how to describe them, but he, he's, uh, he, he, um, <laughs> he sort of abused his role as a representative of us, I would say. That's what I said to him, anyways, with his face as, I, as he was trying to get my support for something. I think it was his run for U.S. president. Make a long story short, he did not win any re-election to anything. Um, so he did try to keep his vice chair role, and then he tried to get a uh, um, uh, alternate at large, I think it's called, or something like that, a representative at large, and he did not win. So he's, he's officially, he doesn't have an official role in the party other than being a member right now. <clears throat> I, and it's it's fine. It is what it is. Um, Who is it? Uh, Arvin oh, Vorha. Or, I think I'm messing up his name. Um, we have an awesome new vice chair named Alex Merced. Extremely positive human being. Um, I think you probably have to uh, go through hundreds of hours of YouTube videos to find something that he said that was negative about anybody, I think. So really, really attractive vice chairman. So if, so if, if Nick Sarwak wins the... Uh, Mayor of Phoenix uh, race. Um, I don't know if it's November or, or August or, or not August, or March. Sometimes these things are off season. So if Nick Wayne's has to quit, uh, we got this gentleman lined up right behind him, and he uh, he's out of um, like New York City, and he's he's I think the like the campaign chair uh, chairman for um, Larry Sharp for New York Mayor, not New York Mayor, New York Governor. Um, so he's 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 got some uh, experience too. Uh, you know, Carlin Ann Harlos, you might know her as the lady Karen. with the pink hair. What? Yeah. Karen Ann. Oh, Karen Ann. Yeah. Sorry. Karen Ann Harlos. Uh, she won secretary. Um, she, uh, replaced Alicia Matson, who moved to, uh, at-large representative. She was a previous secretary. So that's, um, let's see. Let me just check. Yeah. I don't think I'm forgetting anything here. Um... Uh, Susie is State from National Organization of Libertarian Women. National Organization of Libertarian Women. Uh, yeah, up here. Her group did a uh, kids camp, kind of like child uh, care or sitting for the kids of the delegates. Uh, I think of a nice uh, graphic here. They had a pretty cool, like, uh, um, suite in the hotel building, and um, they did a couple field trips to museums. So that was apparently a success for the families that had kids there. And, and did anyone complain? Or mm -mm. no complaints? Apparently, is what I'm hearing. And um, you guys charge money, right? We did charge so money. So they they were pure capitalists and raised money and took care of business and everybody benefited. In all fairness, the LNC helped us a lot. I think they got a free room um, or something. They paid for our um, hospitality suite. And they gave us a $2,000 food budget because it was our first time of trying to coordinate the event. And then we charged the kids, I think it was $39 for the first kid for the two days and $29 for the second and multiple kids after. 
It included access to, we took them on a field trip to the aquarium one day and to the bug museum one day, it included all of their meals and activities and stuff like that. And part of their activities was creating an art project that we auctioned off at the end of the auction, yeah. at the end of the convention for $1,500 towards our 2020 convention. 1500 bucks, so, nice. Um, it probably cost us about six grand to run it this time. So we're a little scared about 2020 in Austin costing us a whole lot more because we've already had like three times as many people going, you guys are going to do that, right? <coughs> we're all like, mm, yeah. So I don't know if you heard all that. that. <laughs> we're but, um, worried about Susie's, Susie's the chairwoman of National Organization of Libertarian Women and um, her people yes, kind of put that on. And uh, they did an art auction and raised 1500 bucks in proceeds oh, to support right. next uh, 2020 uh, convention and do pretty much the same thing in Austin, Texas. So that's probably the other news is, is the next convention, which will be a presidential cycle, will be in Austin, Texas. So come on out for that. Um, We're hearing Memorial Day. Has anybody heard a different date? No idea. Yeah, I heard Memorial like the 19th through the 26th. So they have the hotel block for a whole week. Oh, good. Awesome. I think I was, I think somewhere in here I was trying to put dates, maybe it's further down. So we wrote this up for, for whatever it's worth. Um, I, should, I guess big news would be, I would, my uh, understanding is that Governor Bill Weld is lining up to run and he's looking really strong um, as far as having a lot of supporters. Obviously he's got name recognition. And a lot of haters. And uh, yeah, so I, I don't even know what to say, um, but uh it's 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 just a, it's a dilemma for us <laughs> from zero to, to hero libertarians offering options but now we got you know a lot of uh powerful people showing up to try to fill slots so he's one of them and um we'll see how that goes he's he's got work to do did he call you up and ask for your vote yet Susie? <laughs> she's biting her lip he hasn't called me up yet although i didn't meet him uh, my sister, the socialist in Massachusetts, did say he's the only Republican she's ever voted for. So, whatever that's worth. Um, I think that's it for my report. Did anybody have any questions about the con the national convention that just wrapped up? Okay. Uh, what's your next? Gentleman? What did it cost you personally to attend? If I wanted to attend in twenty twenty. So I I don't even know if Austin has direct flights, but. Airfare, so maybe that's like 500 bucks back and forth to Austin, Texas, if you plan ahead. Then you gotta stay somewhere, so I don't know, 100 bucks a day, unless you got a bunch of friends, maybe it's 40 bucks a day. And then you gotta feed yourself, so that's probably another 40 bucks a day. I, you know, just just for the record, you can, if you're um, a delegate, which isn't hard to accomplish, you can attend um, <laughs> the event for free, you can, you can be in the business room for free. There's typically two tracks for the training seminars. One's the free track, the other one's basically listening to speeches in the form of a fundraiser. Um, so, so, you, so you can you can go do through the whole thing for free as far as the convention part goes, um, but you won't be able to go to like the gala or the dinners or some of the paid speakers or paid bands. Uh, that this this time around, that extra stuff costs at least 150 bucks, maybe maybe more, which isn't a huge amount of money. But you know, if you're running out of hundred dollar bills, it adds up quick. We drove an RV; it got seven miles to a gallon, so it cost us a lot. <laughs> I did it for about two hundred dollars. Did you do it for two hundred dollars? Awesome. Yeah, I stayed at the Pavarcarian Caucus Suite, which allowed everybody to stay for free, so and they uh, they had a bunch of rice and beans there that I ate, Crockets. slept on the floor, and I rode a Greyhound. That is, you should write yeah, yes, right. <laughs> you should write greyhounds. Yes. You should awesome. share that on our Pobertarians staff. paid for my greyhound ticket. We stayed with James Weeks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, they paid for the guy's yeah. beard. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 He let us stay there for free. And yeah, we. we Let's give it up to James Weeks. <laughs> Business. We don't have any new business. We don't have any new business brought to the floor. We got some good people in the room. 
Yes. We, we yeah, we did the introductions in the beginning. Okay. We did good. Is there anybody I'm anybody always bad about that. So I do it very passionate. In the fire on fire. Got to bring something up. I should do. Um, okay. Is Libertarian Party of Hillsborough County doing anything about Amendment Four, the felon voting rights restoration initiative? Well, yeah, we, yeah, we definitely burned up a ton of time getting signatures for it. Okay. Nice. Like, nice. That was like a year ago. Because it was due like months. I don't know was, when, was, but we had to get it in. Yeah, the projection is that it currently it's, about, it's going to get about 55, 56% of the vote, and we need 60% for it to pass. So, like, it is a really urgent thing with the coalition of all organizations across the political spectrum that care about this. Oh, yeah. Um, to, like, scramble and canvas and, like, mobilize everybody to do that. So I think it would be really worthwhile if we care mm -hmm. about liberty, if we care about people having the right to vote. Like, that means a lot more to me than paying a toll, honestly. Like, me having to pay a toll on the bridge is a lot less impressive than somebody not being able to vote for the rest of their lives. So we I think it should be a priority. Yeah, we, so, we were, were on that one as soon as we, it became real. But you could do a, um, we do do one-on-one, -on -one, like, Zoom interviews and share on our YouTube channel and stuff where our host, which is the one right standing in front of you right now, would interview you with all of your passion and activity in front of our libertarian banner, and then we would post that like all over the place and go viral with it, trying to get our people We're just activated. Feeding the wheel, stuff. you know. You guys have a list. We have a list. You know, yeah. turn, turn the list. Um, I was gonna say uh, this relates to voter guides, so um, I don't think I have one to just grab. But um, so we're we're in this community, Hillsborough County. There's all these other parties with other candidates and we're lucky to have candidates if we have candidates at all and um but we can impact um outcomes so so um most people don't even know there's like 150 people running for office in the county I mean, it's this huge number so we um we had we had more we had some people who were really active on doing a voter guide uh i guess two years ago so we started early we definitely had our act together for the primary the primary is in like three weeks and um we produced a voter guide. We have access to printing, and we, and we showed up with, um, you know, we we be we have it on our website. We have it on Facebook, but um, we'd show up at the um, precincts early voting and be like, "Hey, thanks for coming by. Thanks for voting. Stick something in the hand." So that's uh that's our voter guide for the, <laughs> for the event. <laughs> he says he, up on he it. says he says this so calm, but so he's our trainer for this. And I have to show you, it is hilarious. We have, if you go to our YouTube channel, you can see him. Totally, he puts on totally a button-down shirt does, and a lanyard that doesn't say libertarian or anything, and a name tag, and a hat. And he stands there where the cars are driving up, so they don't know anything except some man is standing there looking official as they're driving up, and car after car after <laughs> just roll down the window. Yes, sir. And he just hands them. Window just goes make sure down. Have the information just let them know you got something. And, <laughs> and then on the window inside, there's a thing that says this has been brought to you by the Hill Girl, <laughs> and it's, it's completely <laughs> legit. Awesome. He does everything legal, he does everything. And he did such a great job. He and Laura Santiago last year did such a fantastic job at doing this. They had candidates who lost, who called yeah, and like, like, shoot like, them like, out because they weren't promoting votes. these candidates. I was That's just it. like, the winning candidates that said, oh my gosh, you pushed us over the edge. Thank you very much. The issues like getting felons rights, so, getting so the just, solar panel. So just to tie it all together. Um, oh, voting okay, rights is huge. Um, we can get voting rights ballot, you know, uh, uh, recommendations in our voter guide. Basically, if you want to jump on the voter guide work that's happening, basically starting now, uh, um, you know, we've got we've got the list, but you know, we want to produce it and print it up and get it in people's hands. And we do want to basically man the um, uh, primary polling places. So we get um, various uh, ballot initiatives signed and get. And get ballot um, or get voter guides in people's hands, and anybody. Um, so you're not doing anything besides voter guides. Well, I don't know what well, else to do. Well, we've already done the petition I mean, signatures right it's, now, well, so well, it's I just mean, special in the message. Yeah, well, what, what I mean, what most organizations do, and this is like effective. This has been effective in every ballot measure that's passed, legal weed, and every other one. Um, is just door to door canvassing and registering people to vote at the door. Right. Um, that's what I've been volunteering pretty much all my free time. Like all my free time doing. Um, we do do door to door canvassing and we do do phone calls. Well, I would encourage you to do it for Amendment Four because. Uh, and we do do sign waves. I will do. do I will do it if y'all are doing it. I'll okay. do it with you. Um, awesome. Um, it's probably gonna be a package deal. We're gonna doing. show up with all our bag of tricks. So that's gonna be one of them. Um, right. I, I, if we have a voter guide, that'll be something I'll stick in people's hands. Um, we agree. We're we gonna do signatures, signatures to for that uh, Florida Department of Transportation. Try to 
put some handcuffs on those guys so they have to get us our, our boat support to do tolling on existing roads. That's one of them. That's, uh, is, there any, is there any other active uh, ballot record? I'm just getting signatures. I think those lot. are already done getting signatures. I think there's three. One of them has to do with transit, but we weren't supporting that one, I believe, because it was about taxing you. And All right, so we should probably head for the adjourn, I get the adjourn thing here. So. I just need a motion to adjourn, and then I can accept Hey, JC is still with us? Secretary. Sure. Hello. Can I get a, can I get a motion from you to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. There we I'll go. second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Anybody opposed? So Friday at Velarta's, if you guys want to do the social, which is just spicy conversation in Temple Terrace. Uh, margaritas are buy one get one free six thirty to seven. We just put it out there. So we go to the back by the it's back. It's a lot fun, more fun out. than mm -hmm. running through an agenda like we're doing now. So this is business. This is a business That's meeting. We're happy you're all here. Don't get me wrong. It's not as much love in the room as in Mexican it's, restaurant it's two for one event. <laughs> it's your job. It's your job to hold all the legal leaders accountable right here. That's your job to say yes. That's what we want. No, that's not what we want. Yes, we want to be working. And that's what this whole meeting is about. So we can keep us all focused on what we want. This is the panel room then, again. Um, the other ones are more social building friends and jazzing people up and coordinating when we're knocking on which doors and what we're doing and blah, 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 blah. All right, awesome, yeah. everybody. So thanks for jumping on. And um, I'm going to end the meeting. And hopefully we'll see you guys Friday. All right, so I'm going to hit the end meeting button. So, guys, thanks for joining us. And um, I'm psyched we got, you know, I feel like an energy building. This this convention we got this convention kicked here. off a whole bunch of new passionate folks. So let's, let's, let's make it happen. Folks. <laughs> and younger folks, yes. <laughs> see you guys. All right. Love, love to y'all. Bye-bye.